Well, welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Tundra Cast. Of course, my name is Shaden, your host. We got Rossi and, and Quarrel as the guest host. And we have breaking news. Um, just five minutes ago, uh, the Devils have traded Kyle Palmieri and Trevor Zay, uh, and Travis Zajac to the Islanders in exchange for AJ Greer, Mason Jobs, I don't know who he is, a 2021 first round pick. And a 2022 fourth round pick, which is conditional, and the Devils retain 50% on Palmieri and Trevor and Travis Sajak. Um, like literally, this just happened three minutes ago. Uh, great timing because we're filming uh, the pod right now. Uh, I would I would like to say I have on my notes for my trade deadline prediction because I wrote it to my notes. I had Palmieri and Zajac to new to the Islanders. Wow, good job, Rossi. Good job, Rossi. We're proud of you. <laughs> Could you imagine if we started recording a bit earlier and then it just happened, like right after I, I said it or something? So uh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm I, sorry. It's my no, mom's it's birthday, a, okay? No, yeah, happy no, birthday, yeah. Quarrel's mom. Yeah, no, no, I, I, no, I blame Lou, all right? It's all his fault. You should have waited three minutes. Lou Lamorello. But um, first, oh, okay, um, right now, Pierre LeBrun tweeted, Boston and Toronto were the front runners, or like, it's... um. Besides the Islanders to get Palmieri, makes so sense. Um, from my point of view, I love this trade for the Islanders. Lee is out for the rest of the season. They need a top six winger. Um, Palmieri hasn't been great this season, but I mean, there's a lot of I mean, there's a lot of Devils connections on the island with, of course, Lou. They got um, Andy Green there, and now of course they got uh, Travis Ajak. Um, not, I don't think it's the best return New Jersey could have gotten. I mean, the first is nice, but everything else is just kind of meh. Greer um, has some he has some potential. Like I think he's he's supposed to be I like mean, a solid third or fourth liner in the future. That's what I'd read up on, but I don't know. It's like he isn't anything special. And um, another devil on the Islanders is Court Schneider. So, but you know, you know, the, of course, yeah, the Devils are selling. Um, you know, a guy like Sammy Watson could be next, but um, yeah, you know what? We're five days away from the deadline, and this is this is a great way to uh, start off some talk. Um, yeah. And I think Paul Mier could be a solid, a solid addition to that group. You know, he's probably going to play on the first line with Barzell and Everly. Um, uh, Paul, it, I think that could be a good fit there, especially if they can get Paul Mieri going. Yeah, he's exactly. struggled a bit this season, but we all know what he's capable of. The perennial 20-goal yeah. scorer. He's even hit 31 to one point in his career. Uh, playing with Matt Barzell, who's been electric this season, um, yeah. he could definitely get back up to that. And, you know, he's 30 years old, so he's still got, like, some hockey left in him. Six, seven, six, seven. At least four years, I'd say. Yeah, at least four yeah. years at the level that he's playing right now. and he's Barring got... injury or anything. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. So... It's definitely. I, I would definitely say if we had to choose a winner on this one, I'm gonna go Islanders. What about you? Yeah, easily. I but like. I I'm just really disappointed that New Jersey didn't get a lot back. Like honestly, if you're training a guy like Palmieri and Tra- Travis Ajak, who isn't that household name, but he's a solid third line center. Like I'm asking for Kiefer back at least, and they didn't really get anything substantial back because I I see the Islanders going far. That first, and this is the thing, it's a weak draft. Like, this first round pick is basically like a second because, A, the Islanders are going to be a good team. And secondly, the draft is so screwed up. Yeah, this is one of the worst years to, to be a to be a team not in the playoffs. Yeah. Like, honestly, New Jersey should have traded Palmieri, Palmieri last season. Like, it, last trade deadline day. Yeah. Because he had term. He, like, he, so that means a team would have him for an extra year. Like, they could have gotten so much back. Yeah. Like, I, I just don't like the trade for the Devils at all. I think the only way the Devils come out of this as the winners of the trade is if that first-round pick turns out somehow turns out to be, like, a second or first liner. Well, and even that's going to be tough because, first of all, uh, scouting is going to suck. And, like yeah. Yeah. And like Shay said, uh, the Islanders are going to go pretty far, I believe. Yeah. At, at least they're going to make the playoffs. Second sure. round, at least, yeah. yeah. If, uh, unless it's a late-round gem. Yeah. Know. Then who know, and that's gonna be really tough because of the scouting. So we'll see what happens. Like it could maybe work out uh, for the I, I, for the Devils, but like just looking at it right now, it, it looks like the Islanders. Yeah, 
I can't see it. The Islanders take it. And the condition on the, and this is just recent, tweeted three seconds ago. Um, the condition on the fourth round pick is that if the Islanders make the Stanley Cup final, the fourth becomes a third round pick in 2022 or 2023. And New York has a choice between uh, which uh, pick to trade. So, um, yeah, that's a solid, that's a solid trade. Yeah. Um, for, for the Islanders, and I'm searching up this Mason Jobs guy. He's 26 years old, so he he he's not a prospect. I think Greer is 22 or 23. Let me search that up right now because uh, this is the first time that we're discussing like a trade like within you know minutes. Yeah, it's the fr- we're we're scrambling to find information on these guys. Greer's been eh in the AHL so far. I guess he's 24. He still well, has some. Special. Yeah, he's nothing special. I guess he could maybe have some potential, but, like, I don't know. I still right. can't find anything on this Mason Jobs guy. He's 26. That's all I know. Let's see. Mason Jobs. Okay, so, like you said, Shay, he is 26 years old. Um, yeah. He is... Holy crap, he is tiny. Um, <laughs> he... Yeah, he's so small. In the AHL, how tall is he? This says five foot. Please don't tell me that's actually right. Five foot zero point eight. Please don't tell me that's right. What? Please. That? Don't... No way. No way. There's no way. Hold up. Hold up. Let me search up Mason Jobs. Uh, let's go to Hockey DB. He is. Hold up. What? Yeah. No. Uh, NHL.com says five foot eight. Okay, so. thank God. So they just got it wrong on hockey DB. Right, Rocco Rock Grimaldi's five foot six. Uh yeah. I mean, they can. St- but if he's like barely f- yeah, f- yeah. over five feet, then we got a problem. But he's yeah. not. He's five foot eight. So there's that. It's not that bad. But he has not been performing. Two points yeah. in six games in the AHL. Eight points in forty four games the year before. Uh, he, yeah, he's nothing special at all. I yeah. Doubt, yeah. I doubt he may not even make an AHL team. Let's be honest. I don't. Here. So I don't see, I I don't see how or why the Devils got such a weak return. I mean, to be fair, Palmieri was has been struggling all season, but I don't know. Like he's a twenty goal scorer, and when he's on his game, he he he's he's an electric guy. So yeah, I just don't like the straight from the for the Devils. I get I grade it's like a C minus for them and for the Islanders. Um. I give this like a probably an A minus. Yeah. Yeah, that I agree with that. That's fair, completely fair, and I think that's it's really a one dimensional trade. There isn't really yeah. too much to look at. Yeah, it's, it's not, not like a Pierre Luke the Blah line trade where we can have different takes on it. Like yeah, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. So uh, okay, so the main topic of this video <laughs> was supposed to be. Um, What's it called? Like prediction for the trade deadline, which of course we're going to be live streaming five days from now. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, let's get to that because we've talked about this for a while. Now. <laughs> uh, so um, just I'm going to be I don't know what site you guys are using, but I'm going to be using TSN's trade bait list. Um, Certain I have some thi- I have some things pulled up myself, and I also wrote down a ton of notes before. All right. Okay. All right. So I think the big fish obviously is Taylor Hall. So let's start there. And I for one have no idea where he's gonna go. Like there's zero. There's I, been hold up. Um I, I, okay, let me just pull up the article right here. Um okay, yeah, here we go. Uh it was by David Pignota of the fourth period. Um one of the best honestly insiders in the NHL. Um he said there's these teams are on um uh, Taylor Hall. It's the Colorado Avalanche um, the New York Islanders, I would, I, I would assume that's not yeah. going to be right anymore because they just got Kyle Palmieri. The Florida yeah. Panthers, the Edmonton Oilers, and the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I believe someone said the Boston Bruins a couple days ago. Yeah, so we'll just put Boston into that group. I yeah, I honestly think that Boston, like if I had to choose one, it'd be Boston because they have just a couple, maybe even just one year left of this core. So they might yeah. want to go for it fully. I don't think the Leafs would do it. I don't. I can actually, you know, maybe Edmonton would do it. 
Mm. See, it's tough. I think maybe I think Florida, Florida too. Florida is kind of likely because um, they're going to have around seven and a half cap in caps space freed up because of the Ekblad injury. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I kind of do think they would need another top six forward. I mean, they lost Dadanov da- and um, they lost Dadanov and Hoffman. Some of for Hagee, who's been great, Horncoast, who's been great, but I feel like they need another play driving guy that can play with a guy like Barkov and slot into that top six to, to really make them a better team in that um, in that central division. So I can I can honestly see Florida, um, but the two teams I'm I'm kind of interested to see are the Oilers and the Leafs. Um, I mean, right now Galchenyuk has been amazing for for the Leafs, even though it won't show on the stat sheets. He's been electric with Tavares and Marner. Um, for the Oilers, I mean, it's kind of been inconsistent, that second line left wing spot. I mean, today it was they put Cahoon there. A couple of days ago, it was freaking Devin Short for some reason. <laughs> then it was Tyler Ennis. Like, there's not a consistent guy in that second left wing. And I think that's the main reason why today they put back Leon and Leon McDavid because they know Nuge can play second line center, but there's just no one that can play on the left wing. So if the Oilers can somehow make it work, um, I guess it could be good. Um, they would have to send out a bad contract the other way, which I don't know if Buffalo takes. Um, it's going to be tricky to make a haul deal for any of these teams just because he has a no-move across. He makes $8 million. He's struggling. He's a UFA. Like, yeah, I don't think Hall gets much on the trade market. Like, I think at best, at best you're looking at a second-round pick and a meh prospect and maybe I, a, a, a bad contract. I'd say, I'd say I have – I wrote down a, a trade that I think might happen. I think Taylor Hall goes to Boston for DeBrusque. One for one? No, I think I think a pick gets thrown into there too. But I see. See, I don't know if Boston's going to be able to give up the brush because he's their future. First of all, I and think he's been he's been slumping hard to the point where yeah. he's been a healthy scratch on yeah. multiple occasions. If, if I'm Boston, I'm not trying to brush for a forward. I'm trying to brush for a top four yeah. defenseman. Exactly. Well, well, as you said, they you know they they need you know if they trade away to brusque they f- and then they take in Hall, they get Hall who has the chance to be elite. And, you know, it would be just going all in on this year and then, you know, do some other things to get defense. Yeah, but then – but here's the thing. Then you're – then Hall's a rental. Then you're losing, like, kind of a young piece in DeBrusque. You know, if – like, that's, that's the thing. I don't think they would trade DeBrusque in that deal. Yeah, I, I think I wrote – I wrote him down because of the whole, like, him being a healthy scratch and all the controversy around him this year. Yeah, right. but at the same time, he's been amazing before. I wouldn't read. Look, I I have no idea what I'm talking about because, frankly, none of us do. Uh, uh I wouldn't read too much into it. But still, um, I I wouldn't say DeBrusque is in a deal. Of course, like you said, uh, B prospect maybe a bit higher yeah. if they could somehow pull that off. But, but Buffalo sucks, so probably not. Um, uh, and a second, right? So would. Uh, if I'm looking at it from the Florida Panthers perspective, I could definitely see it. They would want to go far because they've been really good this year, and Hall yeah. could be a big addition to the top six. Uh, the Bruins, I could definitely see them g- giving up a prospect. I don't know about the Brusk, but a prospect and a second to, uh, because they've got like one, maybe two years left in their window. So you see the yeah. Leafs. I don't know about them though because. They've still got a lot of years ahead of them. They might not want to give up someone like Abramov and the second, which they do be proven he could turn into someone really good. Uh, for 30 games a haul at the most. And yeah. Edmonton, I don't know about that either because they've obviously not been that great, but they're still really young in a lot of places. So they could be moving forward and they don't want to take haul on for just 30 games when they don't know if they can even get close to winning this year. So who knows? Yeah, I like so. Hall is really pol- polarizing. I I myself have absolutely no idea where he's gonna go. If I had to choose one, like I said, I'd choose Boston. What about you guys? Yeah, like I uh, think I think Boston right now for me is the lean candidate. Before it was the Islanders, but once again they got Palmieri. But I just don't know if Boston has the pieces to make it work. 
You know, like, what would they give up? They're not going to trade back in nine in. They're not going to trade anyone in their prospect pool on the defensive side of things, especially. They don't really have, you know, that big of a, you know, that big name prospect that they can trade for Hall. Like, they, like the only ones I can think of is John Beecher. Yeah, you know what? That's that's the one that I was thinking of personally. But, the, I mean, there's probably something more because I, I don't know every single prospect. I wish we had Siakam in here. He would know. But, um, yeah. Uh, I'm going to try to see if I can find one. But that's the, that's the one that, that's, that I'm thinking off the top of my head. But Right. Uh, Rossi, you got anything? I'd say he go. I say he either doesn't get moved, or he goes to Boston. Oh, he's for sure getting moved. And I'd say the only way Florida gets him is if they lose Verhage or Hornquist due to injury. I think Hornquist is already on the IR, right? I don't think it's. I don't think it's. To a long enough thing where he's going to be gone for the rest of the year, though. Is he on LTIR? I'll check right now, but I, yeah, I think I think like he if, will. I, but I do agree with you. I think he's definitely going to move. Oh, I, yeah, like there's I, no way Buffalo can hang on to him, and like, he doesn't want to stay can't. there. Yeah, and he doesn't want to stay there either. Like he's a, such a good player. If you look at his expected goals for, which I mean, I, I'm sure a lot of people don't care about, but still, uh, yeah. it's showing that he's a. Uh, He's creating a lot of chances. If he was on anyone but Buffalo, he'd probably have. He, yeah. He'd definitely have more yeah. than two goals. That's all I'm gonna say. And, and yeah, that's what Jay Fresh said. Like he's literally like one of the unluckiest shooters in the league right now. Yep. And yeah, he I hit. don't think he's on LTIR by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah, I just checked right now. He is. Right. But um, yeah, um. You know, apparently the, the the rumor was is, is that Hall supposed to be traded around the ninth slash tenth. We're approaching around that date, so not saying it's gonna happen, but maybe hopefully something could break tonight uh, during the podcast. But please, we'll see. please, either yeah. the podcast or the live stream. If, I swear, if it happens in the middle, well, definitely the live stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, the next guy I kind of want to talk about is. Uh, is David Savard. Um, oh, yeah, I have him up, too. A lot, there's been a lot of, you know, rumors circulating around Columbus. It's a lot of rumors. And, oh. and, and you know what, Savard's an upcoming UFA. Um, he's, he, I mean, he's a solid second pair guy. Like, he's not going to put up the offense, but just, he has a great defensive game that could be, for that can be good for a team like Tampa Bay on that third pair for them just to bolster their depth a bit. Yeah, but how does Tampa Bay afford him? That's true. I have no idea how they manage to get. I don't even know if they have the assets that they can give up to get Savard. They don't even have a million in cap space right now. You know what? Tampa Bay somehow finds a way to has to find a loophole. We all know this. Oh, uh, Tampa- uh, You know, uh, we can we just talk about that for a second? How is Nikita <laughs> Kucherov skating like? He's been skating for like a month now. Like they're gonna on, activate, bro. they're gonna activate him during the playoffs. Like where there's f- no cap space. Yeah, I swear to God, if he comes back first game in the playoffs, I'm actually gonna be. He dead. is. I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure that's what's gonna happen. Oh, I mean, at the same time, Chicago did that in like 2015. Well, it's bad either way. I don't really care. This sh- it shouldn't be in the it's game. It's kind of cheating the system a bit. I know because they know they're gonna make the playoffs, and then they save nine and a half million dollars to try to get one of the best players in the league in just during the playoffs. Yeah. I hope it backfires on them and, he, and he's just not ready to play and he's garbage in the playoffs because oh, I that mean, is so, that's so annoying. Or Technically, with that kind of rule, you could literally just sign like a huge free agent that hasn't signed to like a contract, I guess. Yeah. I, I, it, it, well, if they don't, like they probably want to play during the uh, season, but I don't know what Kucherov thinks about it, but who knows? I mean, there's no point to be honest. Yeah. Uh, like if this was, if this like, obviously the injury isn't as severe as Tampa Bay has told us. Like he's obviously skiing, he's obviously ready. Like if this was, if this was some other team. Say if this was, um, the Vancouver Canucks, and this oh, injury no. happened to Brock Besser, chances are he'd be playing right now. Yeah. 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 Uh, I yeah. say the only way. Kucherov starts playing before the playoffs 
is if Tampa Bay starts to get unhappy about their current situation because they've I mean, dropped. They've really dropped. Matter. They're gonna they're make the playoffs. They're gonna. They're, yeah, they're gonna make the playoffs out. everywhere anyway. But I'm just saying if if either management or ownership decides that they that they want to be first. Well, they he, they can't anyway because they don't have cap space. So the, just the second they get into the playoffs, they're gonna activate him. He's gonna play. And I hope it back. Yeah. I hope it backfires on them, and he's not ready for because he hasn't been in a game situation. Because that is just yeah. Hasn't been. He hasn't played since September. Like, yeah. In a, in a after professional hockey game. Yeah. yeah exactly. I, so I, I mean, hope it backfires, but we'll see. But yeah. Okay. That was that was my short tangent. Sorry. Let's get back <laughs> on this. Uh, but yeah. Um. Savard. Um. Right now, I'm also checking the fourth period, a uh, trade watch list, and the teams on him are Philadelphia, Montreal. Which please don't go to Montreal, Winnipeg. <laughs> don't go to Winnipeg either. I don't want any of the North teams to become better. Um, Carolina, Tampa Bay, and Colorado. All right. So if I had to choose, uh, I think Winnipeg. Yeah, exactly. If I had to choose, they need one, it. They need it. They need. They need someone. Someone on that second right hand side. Pionk's good. Um, Morris, he's good, even though he's not the best defensively. Uh, they need someone else to stabilize that top four D man. That defense, it's weak. It's so weak. Well, I found this out while uh, before the podcast, uh, and I showed it to Jake. Uh, Winnipeg has been talking to Chicago about acquiring Nikita Zadorov. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Okay, please do that. Please do that. Please do that. <laughs> don't get Savard. Get Zadorov. <laughs> <laughs> oh please! I swear, don't. Okay, like. Winnipeg is like one of those teams that I like to watch when I'm not watching the Leafs, and yeah, uh, I don't want them to be really st- better. Like, yeah, like Winnipeg is a team I dislike a lot. So yeah, get get uh, get Zadorov. Here's here's the here's the funny thing. Um, it's like every fan base has in every like Montreal fans, Edmonton fans, Toronto Maple Leaf fans, and Winnipeg Jets fans. They have no faith in their team. Every like every time you hear them talk about the playoffs, they always say, "Oh, we're a first round exit against this team," because I this, this this division is so unpredictable. You know, like Calgary's two and six against Ottawa or whatever. Um, Edmonton against every, like against Toronto's like two or like three six and one or something like that. Like it's so unpredictable that anything in the playoffs could happen. Like. Like Montreal could beat Toronto or Edmonton could sweep the Jets. Like anything could happen, and I have a feeling that a lot of North Division teams are gonna are gonna make trades on Monday because they want to they want to bolster up their their lineup. Yeah, yep. I. Uh, but yeah, we were talking about Winnipeg. Like we said, I think Savard fits there perfectly. What do we yeah. think they give up? I mean, what do they have? I'd say if you're if you're Columbus, you're looking for younger de- like young defensive prospects. So Logan Stanley comes to mind. Yeah. Yeah, or maybe even like a young center or something because they're really lacking on the center position. One guy I'm wondering is Christian Veselin. Obviously, you don't do that trade one for one, but it, what if it's a much bigger trade like Savard and Domi, who's from Winnipeg? Actually, no, sorry, he's from Toronto, but. He has some. I'm pretty sure he has some Winnipeg connections or somewhere. But you know, uh, you can bring in Max Domi as a middle middle six guy, and you know, you get your guy in Savard, and you can probably trade Veselainen or something like that for both of them. That'd be a trade that I think Winnipeg could consider. Or you could see that the Jets they obviously have a really strong forward core. They could try to take out of that to add to their weak defensive core. Oh yeah, they could do that. Um, cause, uh, I mean, forward depth for them isn't really much of a big deal because they could just play their top nine for days and it would be amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. but they need to focus on that defensive core. Yeah. So Logan Stanley is an option. I don't know. Maybe someone like Adam Lowry. Maybe. Uh, I don't uh, think Winnipeg yeah. moves him because he's too good defensively. Yeah, Lowry's maybe. pretty good. Yeah, I maybe. think if anything, they try to get a young center prospect and a young defensive prospect. Someone like Jansen Harkins, maybe. Maybe Harkins I, is a young guy that I think that that Columbus could consider for the because because Columbus's center core is very weak. It's probably the weakest in the NHL. Oh, for yeah. sure. I, I they definitely need some help. Jansen Harkins 
uh, second, third, middle six uh, type of center. Uh, he's a probably a fourth line at best right now. Yeah, but, right now. R- but like he could be something in the future. So that's an option in the deal. Um, uh, Logan Stanley. I don't know. I just think Logan. I I think if they're getting a top four guy in Savard, you have to trade someone that has a similar potential, and I think that's definitely Logan Stanley. Yep. Sammy Niku is also an option. He's decent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's really it. That's all really all I have to say. Like, yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't think Philly should go after Savard after the, the after the, the the decline they're having. Yeah. Obviously, um, yeah. We talked to Anthony Sanfilippo about this, right? We said how they're going to be doing this week is going to depend is going to dictate what they do at the deadline. Yeah. And they have not been good this week, so it looks yeah, like they're they, going to be sellers. They have not been. And I don't know if why Carolina needs another defenseman. They have like twenty of them already. Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> they, <laughs> need, they need a defender to replace Jake Gardner. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. Number the next play the next kind of major player that I think is unlikely this season to happen, but the next player is Ricard Raquel. Yeah, I have that I have that on my notes. Like I have a couple things on my notes, like the duck selling and then I had like yeah. all we could talk about all three of our teams at the end. But yeah, Ricard Raquel. Like he has one year left after this season, so so he has another, he he's still under contract for next season. He he makes three point seven five, I believe. Yep. And I mean he is so skilled. Like I I he, he like if you watch him skate and use his hands out there, it's it's a treat to see. Like he, I feel like he just because he's in Anaheim, like he's one of the most, I wouldn't say most underrated, but he's an underrated player for sure. Yeah. And when the Ducks were like, like when the Ducks were good, like I'm talking about in 2017 when they went to the um, conference finals, then like the year before that when they faced off against Nashville, like Ricard Raquel was putting up 50, uh, 50, 60 point seasons. And ever since then, when the Ducks are on a decline, he's been on a decline. And I think with a great top six, like in Edmonton or Toronto, he could he could become a 50-60 point guy in his prime again, score 30 goals, because he's done that in the past. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, you mentioned uh, Toronto. Uh, maybe, um, like, with, with the way Galchenyuk's been playing, I don't know if they think about getting a top six forward anymore yeah. maybe they go for someone like third line to help their depth out depth out so i don't yeah. know if that's much uh, we'll see in the next in the coming weeks if uh chucky keeps playing really well then it probably doesn't happen but i don't mean to interrupt yep. but uh, uh i just want to throw this in there why does it why is it that every player who's on the who's on the trade board Every like all like if you go like top fifty like it seems like Toronto's oh. in on all of them. <laughs> Toronto, <laughs> like, yes. Well, I mean it's their year. It's their best year to go all in. So it, it just it's just kind of funny just to see every time you look at a player. Toronto's yes. Wrong. It's like it doesn't even make sense. It's just that they've called on every single person yeah. in the league. But like, <laughs> it, it, like it, I think it, like a couple of weeks ago I saw Toronto's been asking about Jonathan Quick and I'm like what. It it literally makes zero sense, but like <laughs> they do it anyway. <laughs> they they call about it anyway. They just do their doing their due diligence, Johnny would say. But uh, but it makes zero sense as to why that would it, happen. Yeah. It really feels like Toronto is just calling everybody about every player. Is like, is he available? <laughs> <laughs> yep, it, it it does feel like that. We don't even want him. We just want to know. Yeah. We just... <laughs> but my prediction for Ricard Raquel this off season or this trade deadline is that he doesn't get moved. I yeah. do think he'll get moved next season, though, for sure. And I do think whoever gets him next season, they'll extend him because I think he's just too good of a player to keep. Uh, yeah. He he like um uh, like and he, saying... and you're saying he's only 27. Like he's still pretty young. Like, he, he has another good 10 years left in him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he. I think if he doesn't get traded, Seattle might take him. And, well, uh, why does uh, Seattle? Yeah. I, I mean, what, I mean, Anaheim's not gonna leave him exposed. Rocky. Yeah, there's no way they leave him exposed. I mean, no, no. What I'm saying is they could do a thing that they did with Theodore, with not or not Theodore, but, but what they did in 2017, where they throw Ricard Raquel at Seattle to get them to not take someone else. Yeah, uh, they, they have, have no one else. Anyone. Yeah, they don't have anyone. But it, yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. 
So yeah, uh, uh, two of the two of the teams that are in on him right now are the Buffalo Sabers and why? Yeah. I don't know, uh, and the Detroit Red Wings. So why? <laughs> I, I couldn't tell you, man. I couldn't tell you. Um, but like Ricard, I mean, if if they're doing it to take a bad contract back, that's a smart move on their part. Yeah, but I don't like, know why the other teams would want them. Want him? <laughs> they they should just be just tank. I don't know what. The, I, we've already done an episode on the Sabres, but like, like I, mean, I said, I have, we honestly, yeah. we could do like five in a row and we still wouldn't. I mean, we could, we could literally, I think at the end of the year, we should just make another one about the Sabres where we just talk about it and and <laughs> we, we review what we said last time and, and we see if, if, you know, we still feel the same, which probably yes. Yeah, yeah. No, well, 100% yes. These guys suck. They have no idea what they're doing. They should uh, really be moved. They're a poverty franchise. Uh, but, uh, I... Yeah, I don't know why the Sabres would do it. I, I guess he's... Yeah, like, I guess Raquel's young. He could maybe... Uh, you know I what? mean, I guess he could give a fight goal, I but, mean, yeah, I, I would say this when it comes to when it comes to Detroit. It's Steve Eisenman. Anything he does, just don't question it, because it's going to work. It's That's true. true. It's true. It's, it's literally like Joe Sackick. He makes a terrible trade, it seems like, and then just works. Yeah, it is true. So, yeah, yeah Detroit... If they decide they could somehow turn it around, I don't see how, but Eisenman's yeah. got his future vision. He'll figure it out, I guess. Yeah. But I think those are the two big teams, uh, yeah. according yeah. to Frank Cervelli, I think it was. Yep. Yeah. All right, next um, next guy. Um, uh, if this was a couple weeks ago, I would have said for sure he would have been gone. But after the team's current situation right now with the Canucks getting COVID... I don't think any of the Canucks move, and this player was Tanner Pearson. Oh yeah, and I know yeah, that... once again, uh, Toronto and Edmonton are in on him yeah. or were on him, of course. Yeah, it's not happening now. <laughs> Why? Yeah. yeah, no, yeah. for sure. I, honestly, I don't like the player either. Like he's not. He, he honestly isn't that good. So uh, I'm kind of thankful that this is. You know, this, you, you're gonna make my my family who watches this podcast upset because he was a former king. Oh, wow. Oh, I know he's a former. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but okay, yeah, I he, mean, how? But yeah, Jeff Carter and Tyler Toffoli on. Yeah, his line. he had he had some flashes, but the second he left that that line with Carter and uh, Toffoli, and he went to Vancouver. He, er, not Vancouver. Well, he went to Pittsburgh. I'm sorry. First. Yeah, Pittsburgh. He went to Pittsburgh. It ju- he just fell on his yeah. face, and, and that was you it. Know, and Pearson's playing with Bull Horvat right now. You know how good Bull Horvat is. He's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, he's decent. Yeah, I, 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 I think, I think fans kind of overrate his two-way game a bit, a lot. But I, I, yeah. do, I do think what I do think he's a solid player, like a a good fifty-five point guy. Definitely. Yep. But yeah, I just don't see Pearson game traded anymore. Um. Yeah. So I would zero Canucks trades is what we're saying. Yeah. Z- yeah. None. I would <laughs> like to bring up uh. Th- three uh, more Columbus players that are on the trade board. All right, go ahead. Riley Nash. Well, Nash is injured for the rest of the season, so he's not getting traded. Oh, yeah? I didn't know that. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Michael Michael Delzato. Please tell me he's not injured. He's fine. He's okay. All right. Uh, Okay. And then Nick Foligno. Foligno. uh, uh, Foligno's the guy I was going to get to next, so yeah, let's just talk about Nick Foligno. All right. Oh, I think I say this every time we mention it, but his face is so annoying. I wish yeah, I could you, you punch mentioned him. that. Like, you, you mentioned that in the first podcast, I think. Yeah. What? I, I, Why do you hate Felino? Bro, look at his face and tell me you don't want to punch it. Okay. He tell was me. happy. He's happy. <laughs> okay. Like, let's not. Let's not okay. do. Let's not do what I did and 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 make sh- and make it so that somebody. Jordan Bennington will never want to be on the podcast. <laughs> all right, okay, all right, let's not yeah, do that. That's a good idea. Let's not do that. Um, so yeah, Felino, <laughs> he's not been the same for like six well, years or something like that. I want to see six years because here's the thing: when Port, I'm I'm gonna pull up these stats, and I do think I can, I think I can make a solid point because Felino's honestly not that old. He's like 33. Like that's yeah, he is 33. Like that's not like. I mean, it's old, but it's not old, old. So he still, he he, still has a good, like, three years yeah, left. Three at the years, yeah. But here's the thing. 2014-2015. Yeah. 
he had 73, 73 points in 79 games. 15, 16. That was the first year Torts took over. Oh. 37 right. points. I see your Next point. Next draft oh, no. that. 51 oh, no. points. Now, you might be saying, oh, 50 points. In 1670, that was the year when Columbus had a what, 12, like 15 game win streak or something. It was and, insane. Then know. they fell off. So that that whole team overachieved. Yeah, 2018, I... 33 points. 18, 19, 35 points. Like his numbers have been in the 30s, and he's been playing gameplay bottom six time because of towards his system. But if you look beforehand, he's been a he's been a 70, 40 point score. Like. And, yeah. and, I'm gonna, and right now, Toronto is interested on Nick Foligno, which Please Coral's don't. not gonna like that. <laughs> but is that, a, is that but think, not I surprising? Think, but I think that's a good. That'd be a good fit for Toronto. Another veteran guy to play in the bottom six. He can he can play on the second in the power play. He can play PK. He brings leadership. And I do think with the development team a uh, Toronto has over there, he can regain a forty point season. It- Maybe I I think that a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of teams might not want to take the chance on him because while he only has one year left at five point five million, uh, you know I think it's you know kind of like the Buffalo effect. There's the Columbus effect. Yeah. Like, but even oh, um, I guess there's this is kind of kind of breaking news, but the Blues are health healthy, healthy scratchy Mike Hoffman. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I heard about that. And I remember when Mike Hoffman said he didn't want to sign with us at the beginning of the year because he wanted to be with the contender. <laughs> I mean, the I'm, I'm just gonna I mean, say we're doing better. Defenders. We're we're doing better than the Blues and Jordan Bennington. Yeah, but you're still gonna get swept in the first round. Hey. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but back to Nick. A punch Polino. <laughs> no, don't say it. <laughs> But yeah, I I think I don't think Columbus should trade their captain though. No, I I think they should keep him. But... They should keep him and then fire towards the, like as soon as the buzzer goes on, whenever their last game is, I better see a press release that says John Torrella has been relieved of his duties. And if not, that franchise is screwed. It should be no. It should be like uh, in the cartoons where a big cane comes out and hooks him away. <laughs> That's what you should see when the final buzzer goes out, just towards going. Bleep. Honestly, I think it's amazing how somehow, somehow John Hines has outcoached John Tortorella this year. Well, I mean, Hines wasn't going to get fired either way. Yeah, but, you know, it. it's nice to just see, like, it, well, not nice if you're, you're, not nice at all in the viewpoint of Columbus and not nice for anyone. It's kind of, it's, it's really bad to see this from Torts. Yeah, with you know the benching of so many players, and and all that, and I you mean, just he's see doing a, he's so doing Jack, many. He's doing a Jack Rosovic right now, who who's honestly been one of their better players this season. Ah, oh, I can't even. Torch is so annoying. He's so infuriating. <laughs> no, I <can't>. yeah, <laughs> I just, like. There's so many good players. <laughs> There's like not good. Uh, there's so many talented players on that team that he's messed I, up. I I'd say this, though the best way you can tell what kind of effect a coach has on a team is when you watch a game and you j- and like don't even watch like the game itself. Look at the two benches. It, oh, because you can y- with you the can... way the players are sitting and everything, you can tell. Yeah. Like I I'll, I'll say this in in the beginning of the year. After the two wins against uh, Columbus in Game One and Two, when we started going on that big skid, yeah. every player on the bench just looked beat and and like broken. But then from the win against Tampa Bay to now us being ten and two in our last twelve, the players actually look amped up and stuff. And last time I watched a Columbus game, all of the players looked slumped over. And this is from a. Uh, Columbus team who what in their last thirty games played have only won ten games. Oh yeah, it's been bad. That's what they need to do something. And I don't think it's training your your guys. I think it's I think it's just getting rid of Torts. Because guess what? If Torts is staying next season, guess who's gone? Patrick Line. 
Yeah. Yeah, he's, I, he's and, not going to stay. I don't even blame and him. And I wouldn't be leave. surprised if he, I wouldn't be surprised if he's not the only one to go. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised either. Like uh, like I I'll call right now like a bookmark this. Like if Torre if this is if Torre stays, if he does stay, I I think there's going to be two transactions in for the like big transactions for the Blue Jackets next season. That's Seth Jones gone and Patrick Laine gone. And for I, I'll, sure. call, and I'll bet money on it. For I can see sure. it happening for uh, sure. Okay, well, we should probably I, get back to the trades, though. I don't know where we're yeah. going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but here's the thing. I was going to ask this. Does Columbus move either Merzalinkis or Corpusalo? Mainly Merzalinkis. In the you think in the off season? Yeah. yeah. Not. I don't think the deadline's the best time to do it. I think the goalie market will heat up a lot in the summer. But this isn't this isn't the time to do it because of the quarantine yeah. issues. And yeah. also uh, the I, fact that uh, neither of those. I don't. I. I don't. They're barely ever in not injured at the same time. It's yeah. crazy how much those two get injured, and it's like it's they, like as yeah. soon as one comes back, the other get just dies. Yeah, they yeah, need it, both of the goalies. Yeah, I don't think they. I don't think. I think. I don't think Corpusalo gets moved. I would put a lot more faith into Corpusalo than I would Merzlikus. Uh, I, 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 I don't know. Elvis so. has been pretty. I don't know. Elvis has been pretty damn good. Yeah, Elvis has been very good, but we we know and we've seen what Corpusalo can do. Yeah, it is true. It is true. All but, right. Yep. Yeah. So next, um, we got the sixty-seven point six percent face-off man himself, Luke Glendening. Mm -hmm. Um. Once again, for like the eighth year in a row, Toronto's interested in this guy for some <laughs> odd reason. And they'll get him when he's Edmonton like forty. They'll get him when he's like forty. Yeah. Don't worry about it. And it says Edmonton here, but thankfully Friedman says it's not going to happen. So that he better be right because if we get Luke Glenn Denny and that's our big off and that's our big trade deadline move, I'll be mad. I mean, if if you're a team that like, I know if you look at the past Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, between the two teams, if if you look at the past Stanley Cup final teams, each matchup, the save percentage for team way isn't very good either for either side. If you look at the last couple of years, but either way, you're getting a good defensive. Fa you know he can oh, win he's not face up. He just, he just takes face offs. offs. Yeah. Yeah. What I mean is like he's someone who you can put at like the he's someone you can put in the when you're at when you have a defensive zone face off to win and then just throw it out. You know. I'd... Yeah, but that's that's the only thing he's useful for. Useful yeah. for. And here's the and here's the thing I want to I want to say I don't look at you know past uh, previous teams face offs. I'm, I'm going to use 2019 20 here because I mean you know the season just happened. Like Tampa Bay wasn't a good face off team. Colorado wasn't a good face off. No, that's team. what I'm saying. If you look at the last like from 2019 to like 2014, none of the two teams. None of the teams that made the finals had a good face-off percentage. Yeah. I think the highest face-off percentage was like 52. Which is, yeah. It's just uh, yeah, yeah, just above average. Uh, but, yeah, I lo like Shay said, I don't think he's good for anything except for face-offs. But as a center uh, and at that position, uh, one of the teams that I would think goes Pittsburgh. for him is, yeah. Pittsburgh. They need their. They need a bit of depth. Uh, and a depth sensor wouldn't be bad for them yeah. at all. And I guess, I I, I like Shea. I'm not a big fan of Glenn Denning, but it would yeah. probably work out for them. I like Glenn Denning. And the thing You're is, he's weird. cheap too. He, he, yes. he, I mean, he's cheap. He has one more year left. I just think that. I I just think that Pittsburgh is the most obvious choice. They're. I think Malkin's still injured. Um. And here's the thing, Crosby, Malkin nowadays, they're getting older. They're getting more injury prone. And you don't, and you don't I mean, want to throw... Crosby, you don't want... was, Crosby was injury prone before. But, but... Well, yeah, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> but you, um, you know, you don't want to put Jeremy McCann in the first line center spot. Just, just get sure. some more center depth. Uh, I'd say... I don't, think he, I don't think he'll get moved. Like, I know that there's been a lot of hype about around him for the... Uh, you know, for the... Uh, trade market but i don't think he gets moved yeah oh well, i mean i, well, I mean the detroit's probably gonna sell off all their ufas like they're gonna get something for glenn denny like 
if, if a team offers them a seventh and there's like two minutes until the deadline left, like they're going to accept that. Yeah, I, I mean, that is true, but I, I'd say, you know, I, I'd say he doesn't get moved. Okay, that's kind of bold. But All right. The next, the next player I have on mm-hmm. the trade list here is Scott Lawton. Um, uh, Philly obviously just sucks this year for some reason. They lost like nine nothing to the Rangers twice. They ended the the Buffalo losing streak. I don't know how you do that. Um, uh, and Scott Lawton, uh, this is off TSN too. And Frank Valley is pretty trustworthy, but yeah, apparently it looks like he's gonna get moved. And. Uh, I would not be surprised. Like I, and here's the thing: like I actually really like Scott Lawton as a player. I do too. And he's he's 26. Like that. He's like, young. He he's young. He, he's young. Is young. It, it, and he's young, and though, he's a good third, fourth liner. Not fourth be, liner. He's a middle six guy for sure. Yeah, I I would say he's a good third, fourth liner that has second second line upside. And that, and here's the thing. Like, like he's cheap, of course he's a UFA. I'm gonna assume whoever gets him uh, is gonna try to get try to get an extension of him. And here's the thing: in the 18-19 season, this was his breakout year. He got 32 points. The year after that, the 19-20 season, he was injury prone, played 49 games, got 27 points. And this year, he he's once again has 17 points in 35 games. So, you know, he he looks like around a a, a late 30s, early 40s type of player. He has a great two-way game, and he works hard. Like he kind of reminds me of Zach Hyman a little bit. He just works yeah. hard. He's gritty out there, and not surprisingly, one of the teams interested in him is Toronto. Or- yep, and Edmonton. <laughs> and Edmonton. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I I swear, if there wasn't a if there wasn't a salary cap, you you guys would just both your teams would just have everybody. <laughs> There'd be no other players. <laughs> What is like literally every time you guys say a play? I'm gonna say this. The next player I want to talk about was Bobby Ryan. Are the Leafs or Oilers oh. interested in? Yes. Him? Yeah. Well, yeah. No. <laughs> Again. Yeah. Actually, um, not the Oilers, but the, the Leafs, Leafs are. are. Yeah. Oh my uh, god. Okay. You know who else? You know who else the Leafs are interested in? Eric Howla. We can uh, talk about that. I will. I, I'll touch on that when I talk about Nashville. All right, but let's stay on Lawton. Um, I think that yeah. would be a, if. I think for any team that'd be such a smart ad. Like that's like one of like whoever gets on, that's like one of the most underrated ads they can they can do. And I don't think he'll cost that much either. Like um I think the rumor is that um as the as we approach the deadline, like in the final hour, thirty minutes, prices are gonna drop. And I think yeah. that's when we're gonna see a lot of the trades. I think it'll be quieter yeah. early in the day, but as like in the last hour we're gonna see a lot of trades, and for dirt cheap month, like dirt cheap. Yeah, uh, I think I think any any team that needs a middle six forward, go for Lawton. Yeah, I agree. Any team that needs like, a forward at all should be going for him. He is, yeah, he is uh, he has a pretty decent upside. He could be on his second line for a lot of time, uh, and if he wanted to play. Right now, he'd be on most teams' third line, third lines, maybe even second. Right, so yeah, yeah. He would work on any team. Any team that got him would be happy with what they've got. And I, unless they, unless they give back some crazy return, they, they come out of that trade winning. I don't really, I, I don't see it coming out any other way yeah. because he's just so good. And you know what? Yeah. I'm gonna, say, I'm gonna say this right now. Lawton just, just seems like a Boston Bruin type player to me. It's he does he fits like if you think of Boston I mean, Bruin, he, you think tough, you think uh, yeah, so you think gritty. Yeah, but he's not a he's not an he's not a, uh, a he's not a jerk. <laughs> you okay? Usually, play people who play for Boston are kind of asses. Oh, like, I, 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 that's Pasternak's not an ass. That's, 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 I no, I'm usually of course there are exceptions to the rules, but yeah. Well, they're gonna I mean, get Wadden, good... I mean, Wadden, I played in freaking Philly, and I <laughs> even argue that's the tougher city in Boston. So, yeah, yeah, that is true. But I mean, it would I definitely mean, fit their style, and you know, Boston's gonna be trying to get yeah. a bit younger. Yeah, um, I'd say Bo- I, I, I agree with that he probably goes to Boston. I just think like Hall or Boston, Hall or Wadden to Boston just makes so much sense. Yeah. 
All right, right next, we have Eric Howla. Uh, I... I'll, I'll, I'll let Rossi do the talking here. Um, okay, for Eric Howla, uh, I'm going to go from what I've seen because, you know, uh, he was having a rough time getting going uh, in the beginning of the year, like everybody in Nashville besides Forsberg was. But he start, he's been heating up around the time, and he's an expiring, you know, he's expiring soon. He's expiring at the end of the year. And I know Nashville in recent, uh, recent you know, couple days, has bas- Poyle's basically said, yeah, I'm not going to be selling anymore. Um, but I'd say this, if you can get a good return on Howla, move him. But at the same time, the injury bug has not given up on Nashville. We get like there's a player injured every day. Every game we get an injury. So I'd say if if you can't get something that you want, like don't try to stretch the trade. If you can't get something that you yourself want, uh don't make the trade because while we do have a lot of depth especially in like the AHL and taxi squad, I'd say yeah. the injury bug the the injury bug has been on us so bad this year that he's someone like we should just try to keep if, if we don't get a good enough trade. All right. Well, obviously we said the Leafs are in on him. I mean, it would make sense kind of because they were looking for a forward. It could be someone in the third line. Uh, but like I said, that seems actually no third liner, right? So that seems more and yeah. more likely that it may happen as uh, yeah. Chucky seems to be fitting in on that second line. Uh, yeah. But who else? It wouldn't be it wouldn't be a big name. It wouldn't be you know the biggest ad, but you know it just it's a minor tweak to the team. Yep. Oh my god, my browser just died now. Trying yeah, to and and Howla Howla especially I I would say his trade value's probably been going up, especially since that that line with him Grimaldi and Cunning has been clicking lately. There you go. I mean that's the best time to click too, around the deadline. Um. Number yeah. 21, for some reason, well, Erica Branson is number 21 here on my list. And for some reason, Edmonton is interested. I don't know why. It would. What? It's a rule. <laughs> Either it's Edmonton rule. or Toronto has to be interested. Oh, so we just have to end up. But here's the thing. The other team is Montreal. So, Montreal, mm. if you can please show us a solid and trade like Mete in a second for Branson. I love that. <laughs> Wait, did, Shay, did you say that Eric uh, the Oilers aren't in on Eric Hala? No, they're not. For some, I don't know why. Oh wow, I just saw something that they are. Really? I'm I'm on the four. Oh, Wait. part it's part of the rule. Oh, God, <laughs> Edmonton and Toronto have to be in on the same on the same guy. Yeah. yeah well, okay. While you guys from, are looking at that, oh, a reporter for fan sided. He said that they. Uh, that they, uh, from what he's heard, it's fan sided, obviously. It's not the biggest, but like it's something yeah. that's out there. Um, but the trade is Eric Howla for Gaetan Haas, Patrick what? Russell, Patrick Russell. What? Okay, and a sixth round pick. What? So what? I mean, it's not. So what? So they're just expecting us to be like, yeah, we don't want anything. We want a bad contract. Yeah, Patrick Russell. Yeah, we have enough of those. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know. Oh, I know. I'm not uh, trained Patrick Russell. Screw that. <laughs> but well, uh, you know, I'll be well, back guys in five are... minutes, guys. Okay, yeah, sure. All right, all right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I I will say this. I have uh some players I have uh up on my list because I I wrote down a list. I basically just wrote a ton of like players that I saw in recent rumors. So like Dustin Brown. Yep. Bobby Ryan. I wanted to talk about L.A. I thought we'd all talk about our favorite teams. We can get to that. And and uh, I want to I want to talk about the Stars right now because I saw that the Stars are looking to ship off uh, Dobby. And I don't see why. Uh, Dob two. Anton Godobin. Oh, Godobin. Okay. Um, my bad. Uh, well, I mean they got they got Bishop, I guess. Bishop's still hurt though, and I and I I unless it's unless I just haven't seen any, it like and I just missed it, I have like I have seen no news on any even timetable of Bishop returning. Let's so why see. would why would you trade away 
Oh Good no, he's supposed to be back to re- in the next week. Oh really? Then then yeah, that changes everything. I didn't <laughs> I didn't see that. Yeah, Frank Sir Sir Valley said um in the next week or two he will be um uh, yeah, Ben Bishop will likely be returning. And yeah, it's been confirmed by GM Jim Neal. Okay, so yeah, he's gonna uh, be back yeah. soon. Yeah, so that that changes a lot. Um, so yeah, so Godobin could be moved, but I don't know for what. I don't know what they, what team would buy into him. Um, obviously the Leafs. They're gonna be in on that. Um, and Edmonton. Edmonton for sure. It's, it's so what team would um, need a goalie going into the playoffs? Maybe a decent. A um, backup. Um, I'd say the teams I've seen that have been in on goalies are Colorado, Edmonton. Um, I I can't think of the other one, uh, the other ones, but there there's like Colorado and Edmonton are the big ones. They they're in on uh, Godobin. They're in on uh, Bernier, Dubnik. Dub no Dubnik for some reason. Really not Bernier. Uh, I thought. Oh, yeah, I've I I haven't seen much about Bernier lately, especially since he's been injured. Yeah. Um, but I've seen trade rumors heat up around uh, Dubnik. I could definitely see a Colorado trade because obviously they have a Grubauer, um, but someone that could come in in place of him, just in case, and also, uh, that team. They have a lot of firepower, decent defense. They just need defense. Yep. They're not defense goaltending because Gru- Grubauer, let, let's face it, Grubauer is amazing. Yeah. And Fransuz is a good backup option, but they're hurt a lot. Yeah. And you don't and you don't want to rely on Jonas Johansson or Miska. Yep. Which, uh, which. That's why I was thinking about Jonathan Bernier, because he's been pretty damn good while he's been playing. 30, yeah, he... 17 games, and he's got a 918 on Detroit, right? So... Yeah. He's he's had a bit of a resurgence in the last couple of years. He's been pretty solid on every, in every, on every team he's played, which, I mean, he's been yeah. pretty much only Detroit, but anyways... Uh, that's I mean, why he I, was with LA and then Toronto. Yeah, then we don't talk about Toronto. Let's not talk about. We Toronto. talk about LA though because he was very good there. Yeah, but we don't talk about Toronto. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You uh, also don't talk about Toronto when it comes to Jim Reimer. No, Jim is our goalie. Okay. Game seven. We don't talk about that. <laughs> yeah, we don't talk about. Okay. That. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we, can okay else. we can talk about everything else. We can talk about everything else. But not that. speaking of Jim Reimer, I think Carolina should trade him at the deadline if they can get something good because they have. Mrazek, who's you know who's back now, and they have, uh, uh they have I, Nadelf- I, I don't want to, yeah, I didn't want to try it because yeah. I thought I was gonna butcher it. Nadelkovic, yeah. So they have N- Nadelkovic, who is obviously gonna be a you know a future starter, and Mrazek, and you can have them either as a tandem or, l- let's face it, you just give it just just let Mrazek run with the ball basically. And if you can get something good in return for Bernier, then I er, not Bernier Reimer. Reimer, then go for it. And because Reimer's a solid backup option. Yeah, uh, I have seen. Uh, I have seen a couple teams interested in, in Reimer. One of them is the Leafs again, and I'm not even kidding. Um, <laughs> I I think the other one. Oh yeah, I, Edmonton was in on him. Uh, uh, see, it's a rule. Well, I mean, I, but yeah, but Edmonton just other than Mike Smith, they don't have a good goalie. Well, Mike Smith's been decent. I mean, really good. Sorry, he's been amazing. Uh, but he's... as a backup, Reimer could be a good option. Um, what's the other one? Colorado, I have seen. Um, well, oh, goddamn, I'm forgetting. I should have written this down like you did. Um, yeah, I I wrote everything down. <sighs> Yeah, but those are three teams. I know there's another one, but I can't remember. Um, but yeah, I'd say I'd say if you can get a get a good return because like a, a second round pick for Jim Reimer and maybe like a, a prospect would be would be pretty good to get back for Jim Reimer. Yeah, I, I don't even know if you'd be able to get that much, but like still, yeah, like you, they, even if you could only get like a second round or or like a or like a medium or low end prospect. That's still very good, especially since he's expendable with Mrazek and Nedelkovic. Nedelkovic. 
<laughs> yeah, I, that, I think you hit the nail on the head. He's expendable. They don't need him. They have yeah, it, two younger goalies, one of them really young, who could be their, who probably is going to be their future starter. Uh, so they can, yeah. they really should be moving him because he's not going to, he's not doing anything at all. Yeah, right? it, I, I would compare it to um how it was when when Nashville made the Tourist trade. Like, yeah, yeah. Tourist sucked with us. Well, he was good. The he was good the first year. Mm-hmm. But then from then on, he was terrible. And I'd say, even though he was pretty bad, one, Vladislav Kamenov did nothing with, with Colorado. But the other one, Samuel Girard, we didn't need him. And I mean, we right, right, still love to have him right now, looking at it. But yeah, but here's the thing, though. Like, you have Yossi. Well, obviously, not right now because everybody's hurt. You, have Yo- you would have Yossi, Ellis. Ekholm, Fabro, and then I, I guess Girard and Carrier. That'd be a pretty sick defensive core. That'd be amazing. Yeah, I. But I mean, um, it's still pretty decent anyway. Right, anyway, sorry. Yeah, it, let's move on. <laughs> um. Uh, we could we could talk about the Kings. Oh yeah, the Kings. All right. So Dustin Brown's been in a lot of trade rumors. Uh, obviously. Uh, for is he former or is he no cap uh former captain right he was a former captain yeah, former uh, captain. he was he was the captain for the two he was the captain up until like 2015 i think yeah so they won their and, cu- cups and he wasn't the captain anymore for some reason well, yeah well, and anyways. then they just gave it to kopitar yeah i i still don't understand why you can strip your strip your captain i never understood why you sh- why you'd ever do that but anyways uh he is a big tough guy. I think Josh Yo came on. That's two episodes ago. I heard this week, week and a half, two weeks. I don't know when that was posted, but yeah. And he said that looking that Crosby and all those skilled guys, they would like to have someone like they used to have Ryan Reeves. So he mentioned, uh, uh, oh my God, what is his name again? Dustin Brown. Dustin Brown. Thank you. Uh, as the as someone that they'd like to bring in. I think even yeah, Anthony Sanfilippo mentioned Dustin Brown too, but obviously we don't think that's going to happen now because they, they've been trash and they're probably going to sell. Yeah. Um, here, here's my thing though. Uh, when it comes, cause obviously uh, I, I'm, I'm not trying to be like cocky or anything, but I'd, I'd know more about Dustin Brown since I have to pay more attention to the Kings mm-hmm. considering my family likes them. And I'd say Dustin Brown he can throw the body, he can fight, and this year he's been scoring. Now, we can dispute whether that's been Kopitar and um, Kempe carrying him or not, but I'd say that the only thing that, that hampers any, uh, or that dampens, hampers any, uh, any Dustin Brown trade like the only thing brown trade is his contract because yeah. his contract is what is it like four four years left at five million or something uh let us check that but yeah keep going i'll check on it for you yeah but you know i i will say this i said this about the kings like uh, two years left when, at 5.875 yeah that that's still big you know yeah it's not I, as bad but yeah, it's still pretty bad like uh, I'll, I said this about the Kings when they signed that Dowdy contract, the Kings like even though they have the most or second most cap space right now, the Kings have so many bad contracts on that team. Yep, they have Dowdy for welcome, welcome back. back. They have Dowdy for eleven million per year, for like eight. Like they signed him to like a ten or eight year deal or something. No, it was an eight year deal because it was eighty eight million in total. They have they have Kopitar, which Kopitar is obviously performing, so he's not bad. Um, you have Quick, who he's fallen off majorly. Uh, he's on his way out, probably. Yeah. He's on his way out. Uh, he's also on a bad contract, and it like yeah, for now they're fine. But what happens when you need to re-sign people like Kempe? Yep. So, so what's the um? 
Who have we talked about here? We talked about Kempe. Is it I follow? I think we're talking about the Kings in general. We were just on Dustin I, Brown right now, and I was just going to yeah, talk about the we Island. Yeah, because we were on. Yeah, we were talking we about were the Island Brown because he's been in the. He was in the big. Uh, he's been in a lot of trade rumors lately. Yeah, so I'm just reading this off uh, <laughs> Hockey Buzz, and I think they got this one completely right. Uh, they. Oh, they actually said this like an hour before whoever posts. Uh, no, three hours or something before. The Isles' number one priority is Kyle Palmieri, so they get him. And yep. now, uh, separate sources, one in L.A. and one here in Canada, are saying the Islanders have interest in Dustin Brown. So, And here's the thing. Um, we had Josh Yo on the podcast, and he said the exact yep. same thing. Yep. That- we, yep, I, I talked <laughs> about that, about Pittsburgh wanting to, about Islanders wanting to. So, it, the, I mean, it kind of makes sense, because... Anders Lee, he kind of plays the same type of game, but like not at the high, not as high as a level as Anders Lee. Dustin Brown yeah. does. It's not the greatest contract, but one more year, I don't think it hurts them. Uh, I I say it hurts them if he goes back to how he was like two two years ago. Yeah, okay, yeah. If he's if he's like not if he's on the fourth line and he's doing that, then yeah, that's a problem. But yeah. if he's playing like this for the next one year, maybe two, then. It's not too much of a bad thing for the Islanders because obviously they could use another Anders Lee type player. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. So and especially since Lee was her captain and Dustin Brown was is a former captain who's I won Stanley Cup championships. Like yeah, I I'd say the only that. worry for um the Islanders is their cap situation. Yeah. Oh, oh no, yeah. We've talked about I mean, about that's why that. the Devils retain 50% on both Palmieri and Zajac. Yep, we talked about yeah. that. Uh, the Islanders, they have a bit of a problem with their non, uh, non-trade clauses, but... Yeah, they six Matt mil- Martin, And they <laughs> gave Matt Martin $1.5 million for four And years. they gave yeah, Andrew Ladd like $6 million or something. It's, it's $7 million. yeah, it's crazy. It's Wait. Cra- but we'll talk... We can talk about that again uh, if it gets worse, but... They are. Wait, they gave Andrew Ladd seven. Yes, they did. I thought they gave. Oh, I sorry, they gave Anders Lee. Six. Anders Lee. Yeah, I meant, yeah. I, I said meant Andrew Ladd. Sorry. Okay, they gave bad. Andrew Ladd seven million. Okay. Uh, they gave him six, I think. Yeah, it was six by yeah, seven. Six by seven. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the Islanders are playing really well right now, and they and their weakness is obviously up front, and Dustin yep. Brown is a forward. Yeah. And he'd be great for that third line. Yep, he would be. And yeah, he could move up and down much. if he really needed to, uh, needed yep. to for injury I mean, purposes or well, I mean, underperformance purposes. I mean, I just gotta say this right now. I think I I think the Islanders don't really need any forwards because they have Joshua Host saying and and Michael Del Call ready to come. Isn't, up. isn't Host saying in like in Europe right now? He's not even in the farms. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he got loaned. Yeah, he's saying Hosting's a great player. Just the Islanders hate him for some reason. Yep. That's because of his attitude issues. Yeah, but there's a lot of players in the league of attitude issues. You just give them good people to be around, and they fix their attitude, I guess. Uh, but the Michael Del Cole and Joshua Holt thing. Yeah, great thing. pick. It, you it know was what? a joke. You know, here, I find that funny. The Islanders had like five straight years of top five picks, and they draft in those years like Reinhardt, Strom, Del Cole, <laughs> and Nino Nina Ryder. Yeah, they, they, they suck. They really do. And... And then they get a late round pick, and they get Barzal. You know what? The more <laughs> you know what the more the more I think of, the more I think about it, uh, it makes sense why JT left. Ah, uh, yeah, it, it kind of does. <laughs> that team, that team was <laughs> you can't build around. You can't yeah. build around him. They they uh, gave I, him nothing, literally nothing. He he made Akpozos and what was his name Bailey. So the Pozo, Franz Nielsen, like those guys. Yeah, he made their <laughs> yeah. careers. He made, yeah, made... I mean, you... okay, but yeah, they we gave, talk, we they gave him this. Michael Del Cole. I mean, Del Cole's playing in the NHL right now, isn't he? Yeah, I believe so. Um, he's, not, he's not lining it up like um, the fourth overall pick. Like, ooh, Cor- uh, Shay Coral did not see this, but let let's let's. Let's tell Cora about this. There was a New York Islanders fan who said that the Islanders, that one of his uh, mock trades was Michael Del Cole. And, oh yeah, this, this, yeah. And the and the 2021 first round pick from the Islanders would go to Nashville for Philip Forsberg. What the hell? <laughs> hold, hold on. Let me let me hear that again. That's a great was trade. that Michael Del Cole and a first round pick for Philip Forsberg? <laughs> yes. 
That was an Islanders fan. Oh my God. Uh, that was one of their mock trades. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's move on. I don't even want to talk about that. <laughs> uh, All right, which I, Alex, I have you guys... Okay, so you did I follow? Okay, um, I don't think the Kings should trade I follow. I think he's actually pretty. He's a pretty good middle six winger. He's still pretty young. King sh- I mean, the Kings should do whatever to keep him. Yeah. Like especially, especially since you have a lot of young guys still in the AHL, like Byfield and Anderson Dolan, like those guys. Like you, you should keep I follow. Yeah, so they should one hundred percent keep uh, I follow, and I'm pretty sure they're still talking in extension. So yeah, yeah, um, I- yeah. The only, the only, besides Brown, I only see one other player getting moved, and that's quick. Yeah. I mean, yeah. even that, I, I don't even it. know if that's even for, possible. For the right know. deal, I can see it. Yeah, but I just don't know if there's a right deal, because of course but you heard speaking the Leafs, of Jonathan, but the Leafs just yeah. Asked speaking for of everyone. Jonathan Quick, speaking of Jonathan Quick, the the Toronto Maple Leafs did call about it. Yeah, they did. Yeah. We <laughs> they actually did. Yeah. Oh, but uh, but. Once again, they've also called on Alex Iafalo. Uh but like Shay said, I don't see it happening. Uh, the, he yeah. is uh, he's a pretty t- a solid player that I think the Kings should be trying to re-sign, keep around to play yeah. with their these really skilled centers that they have. Um, yeah. Uh, another team that might want to try to go for him is. Um, I see that's tough. Like you know, and, and if the Kings were to trade, like who would he go to? Yeah, like. I like don't, people, I don't... people say Toronto. Like, who's who's he gonna yes. knock out in that top six? He's not knocking out Donchenyuk right now. You're yeah. not gonna play him on the third line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I... The, I, the, like I'm being honest. Like, the only team I see is once again Boston. Yeah. Yeah. I... yeah. <laughs> That's true. It is once again Boston, the only team. I mean, I I could say this: any team that gets. Uh... That gets like if you trade for Jonathan Quick, he's instantly gonna go back to his like Vesna form, because I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but LA's had a recent trend where every goaltender they have, once they leave, they become a stud. I mean, what Jack Campbell's the only one? Uh, Darcy Kemper. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's fair. Well, Darcy Kemper was good in Minnesota. That's the thing. Okay, but he was. And, and the reason he... why they traded Kemper was because they needed to make room for Jack Campbell. Uh, yeah, and they needed. You and know. they traded Jack Campbell to make room for Cal Pedersen. And <laughs> okay, yeah, man, he's pretty pretty amazing. All right, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, she got it. I mean, she got you. It, it it is kind of funny though if you look at it. Like it's weird. The Kings I mean, had the Kings had Darcy Kemper, Jack Campbell, and Ben Bishop, and they all hit a bit. Okay, down, but Ben they, Bishop is no like I'm. Okay, okay, okay. But here's the thing. What I'm saying is I'm not saying that they like all the players weren't good before. Ben Bishop and Darcy Kemper went to L.A. They hit a downward slump, and then the second they left, they they went back to Vesna caliber. All right, well, I, mean, to be I scared, think team... I think we should. Okay, really whatever. Move this on isn't a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. So, um, I think one should we should be looking at is Matthias Ekholm. Oh God, Matthias Ekholm, and yeah. I think lately that has died down a lot. I think it was uh, Elliot Friedman who said that. It doesn't it's look like, yeah, yeah. It doesn't yeah, it's look, not happening. Yeah, Josh Manson is something that's been on the up and up actually. Because... I think Manson, Manson would be a saw that. Like I, I actually truly think Manson is one of the most underrated defensemen in the NHL. I like, love Manson. I'm like, yeah, same. Yeah. Um, I've always wanted the least trade for him, but we got Brody now, so I'm not complaining. I don't think the least go for him now. It's finally some team, uh, one player that the Leafs aren't in on. Wow. But they used to be. So but, okay, but here's the thing: like, would you rather have Hole there, or Manson? Like, imagine a top four of Riley, Manson, Muzzin, and Brody. Like, that's that's beautiful. That is that is pretty insane. But I don't know if the add least... Tyson Berry, it'll get better. Oh, you know, can okay. I don't bring up that guy's name? <laughs> what, he got two assists today, and they're both secondary assists. <laughs> Incoming eight mil extension. <laughs> the, the, it's yeah, actually hopefully sad. the Buffalo. Or... Barry's actually gonna. Barry's actually gonna get paid, and it's sad. Good, good for him. Just not here. <laughs> you know what? Barry should thank us that we're rejuvenating his career. Shay, Shay, McDavid, remember earlier McDavid. when you said that 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 uh, the Oilers are gonna have a ton of cap space this offseason? Yeah, twenty eight million. Yeah, 
Eight, eight million of that's well, going to Barry. Barry. <laughs> if we uh, re-sign Jason Barry, I, I I will leave Tundra. <laughs> if we if we if you guys resign Tyson Barry, you're probably gonna do what I wanted to did if Forsberg got traded. Just make an entire podcast just <laughs> being angry. Oh, I will be angry if that happens. It <laughs> won't, so it better not. Okay. But anyways, back to this because we've been off topic a lot. Yeah, that makes this podcast good though. Holy crap! We've been <laughs> going right. for an hour fifteen. We should really, we should really. Yeah. Okay. Let's speed up. Let's speed up. All right. What name I really want to talk about here is Anthony Mantha. Okay, that's a big name. Yeah, I did. That's a big name. That. And I heard that uh, there are some rumors on him. Uh, he's been linked to L.A., Cal- Calgary for some reason, even though they've been god awful, and Philly. Um, is he still he, not linked to Pittsburgh? Toronto or Edmonton? Nope. Surprise. No, I meant Pittsburgh because Pittsburgh was linked in on him for a while. Well, let's just add Pittsburgh then too. He has All three right. years left at five point seven mil. He is obviously a top six four. He's great. Like he's just on a shitty Detroit team. And we, I think we talked about this. He, he is really helping Larkin out. I mean, yeah. everyone acts like Larkin's this. Uh, I mean, you know what? I'm not gonna say he's a good center. See, and he's gonna be see, really see here's a, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You, have, Anthony Mantha's 26. Yeah, still young. Dylan Larkin's 26. 25, I think. But yeah. Yeah. Those should be your building blocks for the future. That's because that's a solid left and then center. Left yeah, but imagine center. how much value you can get back from Mantha, especially under contract. But here's the thing, though. Like, do the, that's, what they, do, that's what they did with Athens State last year. But they got two second-round picks for Athens State. Look how well that turned out. Do the Detroit Red Wings really have someone that can just come in and replace Mantha, though? Zadina. I mean, yeah, yeah, that is Zadina. true. They have Zadina. That is true. Even though I'm not the highest on him, I got I, like I, I felt like coming to 2018 draft, I wasn't really the highest on Zadina, but I'll, you know, that's a topic for another day. Yeah. So yeah, so, and yeah, Manthan is someone Manthan that I want to talk about because. Oh, you got echo, Shay. Oh, I do. Yeah, you have echo. I can hear myself talking. Shit. <laughs> um, but. I'll say this. I did not have Mantha on my thing because I don't think that they should trade him and I don't think he gets traded. I like, I don't know if he moves at the deadline. That's the thing. They might want to keep him for the season. There's something that might happen in the off season. It might happen at next year's deadline uh, because how, how many years does he have left? Anthony Mantha. I think Shea literally said he had like three. Yeah, he has four years left. So All right. it, it's something that could happen in the next one or two years. But right now, I don't know if... Uh, He's gonna move, but he's been really good in the last couple seasons. Um, and I do expect that uh, unless Detroit has a bit of a turnaround, uh, Zadina might just come up and take that spot while Mantha um, is traded, and they could get a lot out of him because he's a really good player. All right, anyone else have anything to add? Because I think we should really get moving. Um, I'd say before we all talk about what we expect from our teams at the trade deadline. Um, I'd say somebody who a team should want to move, but is probably unmovable is a uh, Ottawa might want to get rid of Matt Murray, but I don't Oh, think... that's not, that don't say Yeah, that. no one, no one's going to want that. All right. So now um, for the final, let's say five, 10 minutes of this podcast, let's talk about our own teams. I'll, I'll go last and, uh, since let's, let's okay, let's hear Rossi's thoughts first. What do you think Nashville will do? Um, I think I think if David Poyle is smart, he doesn't really sell any of the bigger names like Ekholm or anything. I think what he does do is, uh, I said this in replying to Adam Vigan, who's a big like name when it comes to being a Nashville insider. Is I said, um. You have Mar- Mikhail Groundland, who is has a lot of value. I I said, get in talks about extending him. If if you can, if he wants to come back for like three or four million, then don't trade him and re-sign him. But if he doesn't want to come back, then trade him. And I, w- with a lot of our pending UFAs, I'd say do that too. Like, I I just don't see us really selling unless we get a very good return 
especially with all the injuries. Uh, like, we're doing good, and then the injuries, you know, uh, like, because, you know, you sell off a, you know, let's say you sell off a depth piece, what happens if someone else gets injured? That's just less, less depth. But for Nashville, if if anybody gets traded for Nashville, it's going to be Howla and Gronland. And for both of them, try talking to them about extensions, see how much they want, see how 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 long they want. And if and if they want something like like Howla, one to two million, and then Gronland like three to five, then if they want that at a good amount of years, then re-sign them because they've been very good for us this year. And yeah, I agree with you because the Nashville Predators, they uh, they look like they have a pretty good squad. Injuries have ravaged them, and um, John Hines has ravaged them. And I think once they fire him, please fire him, they could really do something good yeah, I mean, until everyone drops off. Yeah. I... All right. Coral, what's your thoughts? Okay, my thoughts. I have no idea what the Leafs are going to do because no yeah. one ha- ever has any idea what the Leafs are going to do. But if I had to choose something, I say, if Chucky keeps doing what he it does, what he's doing, someone depth forward, that's really all I can ask for. Because Freddie's coming back. It sounds like Campbell's been amazing. That's a pretty solid tandem. The defense has been pretty solid. I, I really don't know what else you could add without giving up too much. And yeah, that's the bottom six forward. That could probably uh, kill penalties, win faceoffs. Yeah, just something. I don't know. Yeah, like just score here and there. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I, yeah. Th- there's not really much that I would change about this team because they've been rolling lately. Now Edmonton, um, it's been reported that we need we're we're in need of a third line right shooting centerman, and they're they're saying that Glenn Denny is not going to happen. And the one guy that keeps getting brought up, and it's one guy that I would I would love to have, and it's Derek Ryan. Um, he's, he's so good on the PK, and even though he's not the youngest guy, he's turning 35 in December, um, like, he, he can bring, he, like, he's a right shot, he can, I think he has, like, around a 50, 51% face win percentage, and he can, he can actually 30 points a season, like, uh, he, he's a bit of a late bloomer to the NHL, but in his first full season, he got 30 points in 67 games, then the year after that, he got 40 and 80. Then in his first season of the Flames, he got 40 and 80. Then uh, last season, uh, he got 30 points in 68 games. So this is a guy that can get you 10 to 15 goals a year, bring in 30 points, and play on both special team units. And 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 like he'd be so useful for the Oilers. But the thing is, he plays on the Flames. So yeah. chances are the Flames are going to ask a lot. You know, are going to kind of raise the price for the Oilers if they that want is- him. The, yeah, that is true, but uh, speaking about the Oilers, there's another player you guys were in on that I forgot to mention earlier, and that's Sam Bennett. <laughs> you guys were in on him. You guys were in on him. Wouldn't that be ironic, Sam Bennett? After, you know what? It's funny. Every time I make fun of someone on Calgary, like, I make fun of their coach, Glenn Goltz, and he joins the Oilers. I make fun of Mike Smith, he joins the Oilers. I make fun of fucking James Neal, and he joins the Oilers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and now I make, and then now I make fun of Sam Bennett becoming a bust. And if he, if he, if he's an Emmett <laughs> Oiler, I will cry. <laughs> Wait, you know what you should? Do? Is there anybody on Calgary that you do want on your team? Like, let's say Elias. Eric Lindholm. Ryan. Well, well, okay. besides that, Elias Lindholm. Okay, start trash talking if he's gonna go to Edmonton. <laughs> all right, in the live stream, that's all you're gonna hear Shay doing. And I think yeah. we gotta end it there because this is gonna take forever um, to yeah. export. But yeah, we'll we will be like if a trade happens. Uh, yeah, watch we'll a trade. Ha- you know what? Just yeah, if a trade if a trade happens, happens right? we will be back. But even though we for, said that last time, and it, uh, the Daryl Sutter firing happened like five hours after. Yeah, yeah, but, but I mean, everyone's just tired. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. If it's a big deal, we're definitely coming back. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, so. Uh, April 12th, that is the Monday after this goes up. Um, I probably should get this up really quickly, but we'll see. Uh, the Monday after this goes up, the, we are going to be trade, uh, streaming the trade deadline, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., I think. Uh, we're going to have all the Tundra boys coming in and off. We'll 
see if we can get everyone else from Tundra back on here as well. Um, and I th think we'll have like one or two constant uh, podcast yeah. hosts. I like I'm gonna be one of the constant ones, considering I'm gonna be the one streaming. Your PC better be ready. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing some test some test streams. That's good. All right. Yeah, so yeah. We're, we'll figure that out. We'll have it ready for April 12th. I hope everyone is able to come out. And thank you for listening to another episode of the Tundra Cast. And we will see you next.